welcome to Race to Vegas Part 2 here on the Out of Spec Motoring Channel. You join me with a line here at the Green, Green River Electrify America station where one charging unit is outputting about 100 amps where an e-tron just pulled in getting just about 40 kilowatts. There's a Rivian R1T that's been here for 45 minutes. They're still not even at 40% state of charge yet. And we are on a race between the Lucid Air, which I'm driving here, trying to beat everyone to Las Vegas and I'm racing the Porsche Taycan, which still hasn't arrived here to Green River, so I'm ahead of them, and the Tesla Model S, which Colton is driving. He's at the supercharger, charging up nicely at 150 kilowatts, just a few blocks down the road. So, like we watched in the previous episode, if you haven't watched it, please do, so you can get a sense of just the range and the efficiency of this car, but the big topic has been, when you buy a car, you buy into a charging infrastructure, and all of these owners purchase their electric cars to, you know, experience the next generation of mobility. And unfortunately, the next generation of mobility at this point looks like this, unless you drive a Tesla. Lines, super long charging. It's 104 degrees out here. We're all baking. This mach is pretty low as well. And uh, there's just nothing we can do. There's two Rivians, one's towing in front of me. So he needs to do a super deep charge no matter what. He's unhooked his trailer, but they got to go far. That other Rivian over there needs a deep charge with all the bike racks on the top and uh we're hosed so we know that the lucid and the porsche will not win but what is going to happen between the two of us we are still continuing the race to vegas we're going to go full send from here in green river into las vegas we know colton will make it to the resorts world before me and ryan do but the race is still on let's see how these cars perform on a trip we still have another 600 miles or so to get to vegas let's see what happens <laughs> So Ryan, we have to kind of figure out what we want to do in this video now because we're here, we're going to Vegas, and ultimately we have another trip on the way back to maybe even redo this on the yeah. return. We'll have to see. But ultimately we're still going. I just ordered pizza from the Chow Hound. So you said you've tried it before and you're I'm, alive. I'm alive. I might have gotten food poisoning. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so things are good. We'll also share the pizza with some folks here who are waiting. So uh, yeah, let's make a little party out of it. And yeah. um, we need to figure out if we're gonna just get our cars there as quickly as possible, which we know at this point the Lucid would win because you would wait to charge or if um, we wanna like wait for each other. Yep. I'm thinking what we should do is just to kind of make it super even is we'll charge up just enough to make it to Salina mm -hmm. and then we'll just leave at the same time. Yep. So that I'll basically will eliminate this variable of traffic. That makes sense to me. And I think that just keeps it interesting because then from here to Vegas, it's no longer advantage lucid. I no longer get that big range hit. Yeah. And then it's all about, which I'm really curious about on the long trips, the Tycon charging curve, which is amazing. Yeah. You can onboard so much more energy than I can. Yes. And great thermal management, which the Lucid doesn't have in this heat. Right. Uh, versus long range and, and technically higher peaks. So I think let's do that. Let's just charge up enough. We'll eat some pizza and we'll do uh, our own little mini race to Vegas leaving from here but we'll leave with what we would have left with anyway. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Great. Hey guys, for those of you who haven't watched the previous video, let me explain to you a little bit about what happened and then what we decided sort of in real time to do with this part two version. Again, like I mentioned in the first race to Vegas, you really want to stick around for part three. That is where all cars had pretty much a clean run from Vegas back to Colorado and it's just amazing. I also want to apologize for the delay in editing. I left my laptop at home and then I lost it and now I got it back and we're getting the videos out. So um, yeah, the, you know you know us at Out of Spec, we're never so timely with these edits, are we? Anyway, here's what happened. Uh, we were racing, of course, the Lucid, the Plaid, the Tycon. We go through all the specs, all the versions in the first video. So we're racing, you know, Tesla Model S and the Supercharger Network versus Porsche Taycan, the best charging EV on the market, I would say, can onboard so much energy, zero to 50% in 10 minutes. And then the Lucid Air, which has all the range and actually a, the fastest charging car, 350 kilowatts, but only for a very short peak. And then it kind of dies and it doesn't hold that power very long. So each car has their own strengths and weaknesses. Each car has pretty much the exact same mileage and usage history, and it's a race between the three. Now, 
the first leg was amazing because the Lucid was able to just blow by the Model S and the Taycan because it has that huge initial range boost. I was able to leave it 100% state of charge and just hammer past. But again, the race to Vegas is not just on one charge. You have to stop and charge. So that's the whole point is uh, basically you got to stop onboard energy. The Lucid's a slower charger than the Taycan and the Model S has, of course, the best charging network. So no question, we are declaring the Model S a winner in the race to Vegas on the way there. That's made apparent. Colton was charging perfectly at the supercharger. Uh, we had to wait an hour and a half before we even got to the plug. And it was just, you know, the Rivians in front of us were only getting 30 to 50 kilowatt charging. But, um, you know, you'll actually see what happens with the Lucid. Pretty interesting stuff. So we're stuck behind those Rivians that were charging for well over an hour. Uh, and it's not their fault. Like, they had to charge to get places. Anyway, in part two, just to clarify what we've decided to do is... We already know that the uh, Tesla was gonna win. Um, but what we decided to do was all charge up, both me and the Taycan, to where we would have anyway, and sort of restart the race to Vegas, sort of as a separate experiment, to see how the Lucid fares when you don't give it that huge range, 100% charge boost. This would be like if you're driving across the country, we're sort of picking it up halfway because you've already burned your big initial charge so now it's all about charging power, your charging curve, and your vehicle efficiency. And that is where it gets pretty interesting between the Taycan and the Lucid. The Taycan's less efficient, and it can charge actually faster in terms of average charging power over a session, whereas the Lucid can't onboard as much energy in that period of time, but it's more efficient. So it is, you know, now the, the race is on. We also had Colton sort of wait and stop for us uh, and we all drove there together. However, Colton left with way more energy in the Model S, you'll see. He charged up to 90% to skip some superchargers and stuff. And um, yeah, but no question, the Model S is the winner. He was there just, you know, basically we wanted to get to Vegas, reset and then blast back. So enjoy this video. It's a little convoluted. Our testing plans and procedures don't make that much sense, but it is just an interesting drive between the three cars but again we had everything perfect everything lined up for the return back and uh, I'm actually working on editing that video for you right now so I want to get that up to you as soon as possible because this video is kind of a dud but we thought ah well we were driving anyway it's kind of interesting things happen but but our sort of procedure or plan doesn't doesn't even make much sense to me so just enjoy the convoluted video of us just getting to Vegas and stay tuned for part three the next video where we have the epic return race. Well, we have come up with a great plan to continue race to Vegas and make it still interesting and, and you know, I would say, um, you know, sort of pick up where we left off is what we're going to do. Um, basically, no matter what, the Model S won this test, wouldn't you say, Ryan? Not, a, yeah, no question. Yeah, I mean, they, we were, we're still going to be here for another hour to two hours getting the cars charged. So what we're going to do is, okay, Model S wins. Now it's a race really between the Taycan and the Lucid. But Colton's also just about to unplug and head towards Vegas. We asked him to come and wait with us because what we're all gonna do to make this video interesting, of course, is just charge up enough to get to Salina, which is what our plan was anyway. And we'll all just leave here at the same time. So consider it a little bit of a reset and then we'll have to maybe redo the whole thing, race to Vegas on the way back. Um, but this could be still really interesting and it removes the big variable of the big range from the Model S and the big range from the Lucid, and this really simulates what happens in the middle of a road trip. So it looks like the e-tron folks are just unplugging here, which is great news. So they're out, Lucid's up, and we may not be here as long as we were expecting, Ryan. We're not sure exactly what the plan is totally yet, but Kyle said, head over to EA. We'll talk about it and get her figured out. And look who's coming. Three electric cars in a row. You have a Model S, a Model 3, and a Volkswagen ID4, which is going to have to wait in line here. So Colton's charged up enough, which is great. <laughs> and so, uh, yep, <laughs> just craziness. Hey. And you wonder why everybody's going to next. Right, this is the reason we're switching to Tesla. So you win, congratulations. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna do a race to Fort Collins, a rematch. Cool. Um, but what we thought would be kind of interesting is we all charged up enough to get to Salina roughly. Yep. And uh, you might actually have enough to make it to Beaver. No, I would have had to like, it's told me I would have had to charge for like probably 25 more okay, minutes. Okay, so Salina. Yeah. We're all gonna fight for the higher power chargers because there's only yeah. two 350s. Sure. 
but we're gonna do our own you know race to Vegas here between all the cars let's cool. line them up reset it and uh, we'll do the reverse like full big 800 mile trip on the way back okay sounds so, good should be interesting well the Model S is here screaming away not with cabin climate on but it just was unplugged from a supercharger and it's parked on hot pavement so it's cooling itself the Lucid Maki -E, and the Taycan all have to charge this Rivian's only getting 38 kilowatts. That one's getting 60 kilowatts. Ooh, big news. But uh, what's kind of crazy is this Rivian can make it to any DC charger in either direction, uh, but they're still here charging and, and nowhere to be found. We're gonna sit across the street and have lunch while we wait. We'll keep an eye on it. We already talked to the folks in the Maquis. As soon as we see the red one pull out, we'll get the Lucid on the charger. We're gonna get all the cars charged up to where we would have left anyway. And just as an interesting experiment to Vegas, we'll all just race you know, basically leaving from here at the same time, yep. knowing that, um, you know, no, regardless, you buy the car, you buy the infrastructure. Colton, you would have been, you know, <laughs> 10 beers deep and asleep before we got there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> holy smokes. So let's go across the street and uh, eat some pizza. Well, we just finished up lunch across the street. It actually was not half bad. And I noticed that this F-150 pulled in some sort of power support vehicle. This ID4 owner is from Texas. They need a quick top up to make it to Salina. Uh, same with us too. So we're just gonna keep the line going. And uh, you know, he'll be right after the Taycan will be the plan. The red truck is just about to unplug. We had lunch with those people. They're very uncomfortable stretching the range. So they need, you know, 80% state of charge to make it 120 miles. Okay, so whatever. Um, we're, we're not here to rush people or make them feel uncomfortable. We're like, there's another charger in, you know, on the way to Salt Lake that's 62 kilowatts. Same you're getting here, just go there. And they're like, oh, no, no, whatever. So, um, and then the other Rivian has to do a deep charge to get to uh, Grand Junction. Yeah. But since we're yeah, all gonna, we're right. So what we're gonna do is you're just gonna stick to the Tesla supercharge network. You're fed up with CCS, yep. which I'll means be. since we're waiting here and we're gonna, you're gonna basically relieve the pressure of CCS you'll run over to back to the supercharger yep. because you're going to skip Salina EA yep. and just go to the next Tesla supercharger, <coughs> which is yeah. Beaver. Yep. And um, that'll be an interesting test, actually. I think it's a 184 mile stretch between here. So, so yeah, I'm maybe six, 80, 85%, something like that. Yep. Yep. So cool beans. The race still really is between this and this. Should be good. Should be good. So <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. You'll go charge up. Don't forget to film it. And uh, Colton is anti-CCS. <laughs> See, yes, Eddie owns an ID4. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys know what the plan is now. So we are going to restart our race, essentially. So I am headed back to the supercharger. I'm gonna top up and I'm going to strictly stay on Tesla supercharger network this time. So those guys will have to charge in Salina. I'm gonna skip that and try to go into Beaver, Utah. So I'm gonna go get juiced up. Um, looks like we have four stalls available. State troopers are here, things are getting wild. Going <laughs> out over here, we are at 9% state of charge. I'm gonna plug this into the charger. Let's see what we get. Should be quite interesting. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing and getting the heck out of Gray, uh, Green River. This is the most I've ever been screwed at a charger, I think, before. They're now rate your charge users. <laughs> and a half on the nose from when we got here to when I'm able to plug in, which is just crazy. I'm trying to see maybe there's a difference in handle. Which one with the Rivian? That doesn't know. Let's see, this is the first charging stop on the race to Vegas and we're already off to a bad start. So this latch is completely broken. It won't latch in. Let's try this handle. Things are going well. That was a nice click. Oh, and it also says this one's unavailable, so you should have looked first. That's on me. Connecting the vehicle. Let's see if plug and charge works. It did not. <laughs> what? So I think I can activate it from the Lucid app. If I go here, Electrify America charging tips. You know you have a problem when you need to give tips on charging. We're at charger number two. So why would plug and charge fail? 
It's just like problem upon problem upon problem upon problem. Like you have hardware, physical connector problems, you have derated charging problems, and then you have plug and charge software issues, which normally this car plug and charge is fine. Um, what do you think we're gonna get? 71 kilowatts. Okay, pack's pretty low, 9%. It's 100 amps, so you'd probably be right on the money or close to it. But I am hearing cable cooling. Lucid charging plan, zero dollars. Uh, I don't want to. Let's let's check the car screen because if I touch this, it might. Work. We are now charging at 195 kilowatts. Hey, look at that! How does that make any sense? Why was the Lucid or why was that Rivian only getting like 30 to 40, and then at the end 60, and we're getting 194 kilowatts? No clue. That makes less than no sense. Yep. But Ryan, the race is on. Here we go. All right, so we're plugged in here. Um, so let me close the door here and see where we're going. So we're gonna try and go to Beaver. Man, this is a busy station too. Green River is full of EVs running around today. So it's telling us we need to charge another 20 minutes to continue our trip here. Um, 185. Dang, well, this was the last thing I expected was actually a good charging session right now. That makes less than no sense unless the cable cooler times out. Sorry for hitting the phone there after a certain period of time. So what we're going to do is we're setting this up as a race to Vegas from here, and we're eliminating the big full charge advantage of the Lucid. This is like what you'll see when you're deep into a road trip. That initial full charge boost will wear out, and then it all comes down to charging speed versus distance. So we want to go to Salon. China, Utah, Electrify America. So let's hit search. Let's type in Salina, Utah, Electrify America. You would think it would pop up with chargers first because we're in an electric car. Electrify America, Salina, Utah. There we go. CCS, all good. Seems like they're available. Let's see what the Lucid says to get there. 106 miles, Green River Coffee, it wants a 45% state of charge. And then we'll get there at 11, so I might even unplug at 40% to keep it. That's probably what I would do in the real world. Here we are, look at this, 200 plus kilowatts. Holy smokes, absolutely ripping. This is the best news of the day. So guys, check this out. This Rivian over here is doing only 37 kilowatts. They've been here 45 minutes and have only added 27 kilowatt hours and they're towing and the weather's rolling in. They have to do a deep charge. We have been here, surprisingly, this is rocking along smoothly. Four minutes, we've added 15 or delivered 16 kilowatt hours, 216 kilowatts going into the car just crazy fast. So we'll get the Porsche, this and the Model S all to where we need to go and pick this race back up from where we left off. Just insane. Ryan is just plugging in the Porsche Taycan now. I charged up to 41%. It only took a few minutes. It was a great charging session, truly. The battery pack cooling is ripping because we just smashed the energy in there. The car says, um, let's see, we have about a, I don't know, 8% buffer or something like that, which is plenty. So 40% uh, to go 106 miles, that's no problem. Even with these crazy headwinds coming in and the weather, uh, worst case, I'll just go slow. But let's shut this car off. Let's not have it make any more draw. We'll get the Tycon juiced up. Colton's charging up to where he would have done if he was sticking with the supercharger network. And the race is on. But look at this weather about to roll in. This is like a wall of rain. This looks crazy. A bit more than an hour later and we are up to bat. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Ooh, got it. Let's see. Connecting to vehicle. You think it'll plug and charge? I think so. I think it's got it. It's a Porsche. It should. It's a Volkswagen on a Volkswagen charger. It should work. Nope. Really? <laughs> what absolute crap. So, uh, all right, I guess I'll activate it for you in the right. Porsche app, because it's pretty easy. Did plug and charge work for you before? Yes. So it's, it is activated. Yeah. Number two, swipe. It's always right. something. Always, always. <laughs> always something just insane. 
Um, all right, do you think we're gonna get the same charging performance that we just had with the Lucid? No. Okay, <laughs> now we're less optimistic. Yeah. Let's see, emission contactors clicked. This is gonna take a second, let's look in the car. We look there on that screen. Give us a number, 138. Give it a second, it's like every five seconds it refreshes. There we go, 240 kilowatts. All right. That's what we're talking about. I didn't about. have faith, but I should have. All right, so now you need to figure out what you need to charge to to get to Salida. Absolutely. And that's where you unplug. And then the ID4 will go, and then the EV6 GT line will go. Sounds that's great. Crazy time. Let's figure it out. So plan here, I'm just going to charge up to 90 here. And Tesla is telling me I'll get into Beaver with 6%. It's only 185 miles. So, hmm. I don't know, this seems again, very conservative, but we used up all the battery pack last time. So gonna have to do some driving again. We got some rain going on here. So uh, get ready to unplug here and get ready to go. Okay, so I know the beginning of this video was crazy and now the Lucid is like moving the seat and changing profiles without me asking. I don't understand what that was about. Um, go back to Kyle. Um, we are now going to all be leaving from Green River basically at the same time with the state of charge that we would have left with on the race. So it's a little bit of a, basically starting out the race to Vegas from Green River, but uh, consider it with just enough juice to get to the next charger. Now the next supercharger is very far away. So Colton's actually gonna go and do a deeper charge where he is right now. Uh, I'm charged up to 40% to do 107 miles, which I think is more than reasonable. It gives me plenty of buffer. Uh, to consider the elevation and the big headwind and weather. And then Ryan's gonna probably charge up to 55% somewhere around there, uh, just because the Taycan has a much smaller battery pack. So here he comes walking over. I mean, it was just sunny and, and zero wind here, and now a monsoon has come in. So let's hope no power is lost for these folks, because now we have a whole other line of cars waiting to charge. Time to unplug. Let's go see if the boys got back charging. We're getting one of the best charging sessions I've ever seen for Tycon. Over 260 kilowatts at 27%. Why was that Rivian going so slow earlier? I have no clue. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, this charger said it would only do 50 kilowatts. So they must have... I don't know, we had all the other people doing rate your charges. We haven't tweeted anything because we don't want people to know what's going on with the race. We're trying to be secretive. But uh, we got the other people to do our dirty work for us and I think maybe they fixed the charger? What do you think? It's possible. I mean, it, it's definitely behaving quite differently than it was before. Totally, you're getting 265 kilowatts. This thing was ripping at 280, um, just insane. So um, it's 105 miles. I'm at 40%. I can't go back and plug in. Um, the Lucid thinks, because um, you know, the whole point of this car is to get there as dead as possible and use that charging curve. If I look here, it says uh, it wants me to charge to 49%, which is nine more, and I'd get there at 15%. So I have still a pretty sizable buffer around 7%, somewhere around there, 8%, which should be great. So Colton's here, he's charged up uh, pretty high. What, uh, what state of charge are you at? 90. 90, oh boy, that's what you would have done on a race? I'm giving myself advantage. He's giving himself an advantage. Look at this guy. Yeah, but look at this wind. So that is probably what you would have need to do. So that's predicting a 7% arrival in Beaver. Um, we're going to basically stretch it to Salina. So he's starting with more energy than we are. And what's the point of this other than we're just racing? Five miles an hour over the speed limit. All the rules apply. Ryan, I think the Taycan is going to win. You think so? I think so. I hope so. This car charges very poorly. We'll have to see. It's already hot, red hot. So that was my one charge a day. And now I'm going to be <laughs> thermal limited. All right, well, let's see what happens. You're charging up how high? Uh, about 60, 65-ish percent. Okay, 65 percent. I'll be at 40. He's at 90. Should be good. That's all what we would have done anyway, apparently. <laughs> so I know this is what I would have done, at least. I know it's, that's what you would have done. Right. I think he charged up a bit extra. He probably did, yeah. but we'll let it slide. He already won. Yeah, he already won. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call this guy a YouTuber, but now you got to move your car. I'll film everything. Right, thanks. <laughs> uh, Ryan went from 7% to 67% in 15 minutes flat. This charger absolutely ripped, 20 bucks. 
the Porsche charging service claims it's not activated, which it is. Are we finally ready to go with you guys soon? Okay, it's time to start Race to Vegas Part 2. We have essentially charged up to on a road trip. This is where you would find all of the cars leaving state of charge. Uh, we're both, Ryan and I are going to Salina, Utah, where I've charged up to 40%, but then the cooling fans have run for the last 15, 20 minutes. I'm now at 39 or 38%. The Taycan is at 65% state of charge, but again, smaller capacity battery pack. And the Model S is at 90% because Colton is not going to Salina, he's going to Beaver. Yep. And so um, we got a long stretch. You're not going to Richfield, you're going to Beaver. Okay, so that's um, that's a long stretch. 185 miles. Well, you got Richfield as a backup. Yeah. So send it if you and can't Salina. make it. Yeah, and you got Salina with CCS. So um, now basically this eliminates any full charge advantage that the Lucid would have. It's at the lowest state of charge. All of the cars have just enough energy to make it to where they're going. The real race is now. This I'm actually really fascinated <laughs> with. Okay, let's go see how this goes. Guys, just as a little side note, I wanted to include that we are looking back on this. We should have included the charger time penalty, more or less, because we all arrived to Green River pretty much dead, um, especially Colton, but the other cars, single digit state of charges. And so we should include sort of a time penalty as to how long we charged in Green River. So of course, Colton left with way more energy, which took more time. So he charged for a total of 50 minutes in Green River, again, going from 1% to 90%. Over two different sessions, it was about a 50 minute charging, uh, you know, time penalty for Colton. I only charged for 12 minutes in the Lucid because again, I only got a few kilowatt hours just to get to Salina. Colton's going a longer distance. So in the end, you'll see how this all plays out. And then the Tycon charged, I think for 15 or 16 minutes. Um, so the Lucid and the Tycon chose to do shorter distances, quicker top ups, it means we'll have to do another charging session, of course, but Colton, um, you know, gets a, gets a, you know, basically 30 minute, 38 minute time penalty ahead of the Lucid, something like that. So you'll see how that plays out. Model S still wins regardless, but there's the little teaser. Uh, I, I knew someone was gonna comment about it. So I had to throw in the charging time. Okay, there. time to pull out all the stops. It's legit. I no longer have my big 400 miles of usable range, a little bit more than that buffer. We are at 38% state of charge. Colton is behind me. As we're pulling out of Green River, this is where Tesla needs to add a version three supercharger because the version two charger that they have here will not work for NAX equipped vehicles. Version two does not speak CCS and that is the communication that NAX will be using, ISO 1511.8. And so uh, I hope they add a version three charger in here very soon. We're behind a Model Y with some accessories with the nice blacked out Colorado plate here. So uh, we got the boys behind me, the Lucid and the Taycan. Um, nope, the Model S and the Taycan, I'm all mixed up. Okay, on the road here in the Model S. <clears throat> uh, this is gonna be an interesting stretch. So on the way out, I got a thing that says, do not go over 70 miles an hour to reach your destination. So this is gonna be really interesting. I I mean, to me, 183 miles at 88% state of charge, gosh, we should be able to make that no problem. So I'm gonna keep this in the back of my mind. There goes Ryan in the Taycan. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm gonna put it right at 80 and see how this goes. We're kinda of gonna bump up here and we'll just kinda of keep pace with Ryan here, I think. Um, we have backup plans. So we have Richfield, we have Salina. Plan A though is to go to Beaver, Utah Supercharger. Currently looking at 5% state of charge. Again, we have rain, wind. Oh, this is gonna be a stretch. So yeah, below 80 miles an hour again. So let's bump this down. We're just gonna kind of play the game here. Welcome to the beginning of part two here in the Porsche Taycan and things are going well. We just left Green River. I had a solid charging session. And uh, we are now headed to Salina. Uh, it's about 105 miles away. And let's see, we've got 65% state of charge and a good bit of buffer, 16%. Uh, I started with 17. The reason I did that was because there was a little bit of rain that uh, you may or may not see right here. And uh, also a good headwind. So it'll give us plenty of buffer, make sure that we can get there uh, with no problems. Uh, since we've got that uh, up to like 15 mile per hour headwinds at, at certain points. I am drafting off of this Model Y right here. 
and uh, I've turned off air conditioning, so we're not using any AC, but it's getting pretty warm in here, but I'm also just kind of slightly cautious about the weather conditions and making it to Salina. I truly only charged up enough just to get there, according to my calculations. So here's Ryan in the left. He's probably got a little bit more buffer than I have. And I'm just going to draft off of either him or the Model Y for as long as I can. Get that aero advantage. all neck and neck as we're leaving uh, St. George here, or not St. George, uh, Green River. That Model Y can only go 85 on autopilot, so he's going the perfect speed. Technically, 85 GPS in this car is 86, which is how Ryan is slightly inching ahead. But I'm drafting off the Model Y, of course. We're coming into some beautiful territory, and oh, now we have a 60 mile an hour speed limit. So, 66. Boom, one up. There we go. We're all following the speed limit thing so strictly. Yeah, come on over. I'll draft off of you. Put this adaptive cruise to the closest. There we go. Full Audi mode. We're all the way in. Nice. And uh, Colton's got that autopilot set to one. And Ryan is pushing the air out of the way for us. Thank you, sir. Caught up with the guys here. This is pretty cool going through this area. Absolutely gorgeous scenery here. So Ryan is currently in the lead. This Model Y is not with us, but was at the supercharger when I was juicing up. And of course, Kyle in second place here and us in the plaid at the back yet again. So yeah, beautiful drive here. This is just freaking awesome, guys. Come hang out with a few friends in some crazy cool cars and just go drive. This is just what it's all about super pumped with this still at four percent here not getting the warning anymore so man i hope we can make it there because that would be huge advantage model s so um, i do know under zero we have three kilowatt hours roughly underneath zero about 12 miles give or take can also go very slow if we have to really really stretch it um, yeah should be good to go here just following kyle kind of taking his lead if you will and uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see what he can do with this Lucid. I can absolutely tell that Lucid's predicted range on arrival isn't working because we were at like 40 miles on arrival and then as soon as we started the hill climb, it shot down to 27. And of course it doesn't like sharp corners either. Now we're at 26. So, oh no, <laughs> I may have severely miscalculated. Hopefully, uh, we got a big hill climb. This is not just it, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I may have been cutting it a bit too close. We'll see. Look, now we're down to 25. Stop going down. I've shut climbing off completely. I've cracked the windows gently. It's the most efficient I can be. We are still on the climb and you can see just how much it's killing our efficiency. 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. When I got to Green River, I think I averaged 4.1 or 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour in the air. Uh, from Windsor over to there, which is just amazing. So we got to really take advantage of those downhills. The Lucid's down to 13 miles predicted on arrival. It might go negative, but I'm holding strong. I want to see what this thing does on the downhill before I back off from these guys. The speed limit just opened up, but I am not going to be able to keep up with Ryan. Not with this predicted on arrival and keep going down. I got to get settled before I feel comfortable opening it up some more. So here comes Colton for the pass. He's on his way all the way to Beaver. But uh, I told him to send it to Richfield, do a quick top up if he, if he needs to. So, uh, you know, that's just an old decrepit version too, but it's nice to, it's right off the highway. If he needs a couple kilowatt hours to get to Beaver, like just go maxed out. That'll get you there faster. Look at me helping out my teammates. So we have the Model Y, we have Ryan, we have Colton, and we have me going slow behind there's some lightning off in the distance as well, which is looking really cool, looking pretty gnarly. And I'm just gonna take it nice and easy. Hello and welcome back to the Taycan. A uh, quick little update and I'm still uh, moving along, going the speed limit plus five. 
I knew that there would be this uh, rough weather, a little bit of rain, and a big headwind, so I gave myself plenty of buffer, and I'm very glad that I did that. Um, I, I'll have plenty of buffer to get to Salina with no problems going over the, uh, the five over the speed limit, as we all agreed. And interestingly, uh, I've now taken a lead. They're uh, quite a bit back, so. Yeah, I think I made the right call. I, I knew that. Uh, Technically, I could have gotten there with like 50-51%, but I, I knew that there'd be rough weather, and I, I knew we're going five over, and speed limit's 80 in Utah. So, gave myself plenty of buffer, and I'm really happy that I did. Well, it says zero miles on arrival, but again, we're at about 6,300 feet of elevation there in the bottom left-hand corner, and the charger's at about 51. So we crest the hill at 7,000 or so. We go up and down a few times, but ultimately we're gonna be ending at lower elevation than where we started. So that's my only hope to making it there without this insufficient range metric. Uh, time will tell, but you guys know how we do it. We always pull in low. I hope we can make it. <laughs> now this is what I'm talking about, racing in the rain. This will add some, uh, some challenge. I will have a, a bit harder time judging exactly how much we need to charge up. Definitely at risk of charging too little or too much. Uh, we know efficiency is going to be worse, but how much? That's the real question, so. I'm uh, still out here in front, still going five over the speed limit, as, it, as I should be, I think. All right, reached heavy rain here, so still on 85 miles an hour still have 70 miles an hour to reach destination yikes okay well whew. this is going to be a tight one if i decide to push it to beaver um man i don't know i'm gonna just kind of have to play it by ear once we get a little closer here showing three percent arrival um you know kyle told me on this stretch here that he said the car is going to tell you you can't make it because <clears throat> you climb and climb and climb and then by the end of it come down on the other side well it's pouring rain now <laughs> but i think we're going to be okay on range the car says insufficient range but uh, as long as we lose the elevation we'll be just fine i'm just not going to risk honestly going any faster at this point just because of hydroplaning uh, weather conditions are pretty rough so i definitely don't want to go much faster than this. It doesn't look like it, but there is a lot of standing water on the ground right now. And uh, yep, we're just gonna take it nice and easy. In the tyke on here, and wow, that was some pretty serious rain. Uh, we're, it's still raining a little bit, but a lot lighter than it was before. It was wipers full speed, still having a hard time seeing everything. I slowed down quite a bit from 85, uh, just for safety reasons. Uh, rain's picking up a little bit again here. Uh, our efficiency is very poor, two miles per kilowatt hour. Part of that is the rain, part of that's the speed, part of that is going uphill. But I sure am glad that I have plenty of buffer for this. Uh, yeah, huge downpour here and this thing is kind of all over the place. So I back the speed down a little bit. You know, it's important to win, but it's also more important not to crash cars and keep people safe. So slowed it down here a little bit. Um, should clear up. We're getting some spaces uh, in the road, kind of water going off as the rain continues to pour here. Still showing 3% coming into Beaver. We are currently at 62% state of charge, 3% on arrival. Well, the rain has lightened up a little bit. Our projected range is looking good. 18% to do 45 miles shouldn't be a problem. We are at pretty much our final elevation. So we have one last mountain range to climb over, that one right there, and then we should end up okay. So I bumped the speeds up a little bit to 75. Um, you know, the couple things that happened on this trip that 
don't really set the lucid off for a winning situation on the way to Vegas, but I'm certainly gonna do my best to make up for it. Let me explain what happened. So there's a couple of things that this stretch always catches me out on. And what happened was I plugged this into the charging station and charged it to 41% state of charge. And that seemed like more than enough to do the 100 miles needed to get to Salina. Uh, and, and that includes my calculation around, okay, we have big elevation, we have a little bit of headwind, but then a couple of things happened after that. Because we were waiting for all the cars to stage up, here come my excuses. Uh, you know, this car was just running battery conditioning. It was trying to cool down the battery and it burned three or 4% state of charge just sitting there. And then like a monsoon came into the town that I wasn't expecting, no one was expecting, and like just blasted us with rain and headwind. So anyway, the other guys definitely took advantage of the not splash and dash situation where we were lining up to leave again and put a little bit more in the tanks. Now that was a good strategy. So we saw in leg one, this thing has all the range when full charge and it can smoke the cars. Leg two, I'm actually starting out with less usable range than the other guys. And now we need to see if the Lucid can make it up. If this can make up the distance and still win, then no question this is the best road tripper of the bunch. If it can't, well, we'll be doing race to Fort Collins on the way home. We'll do it either way. We're gonna rerun and skip Green River. We're gonna pretend like Green River doesn't exist and do a proper race to Vegas reverse next time. In the Tycon, and I just wanted to, again, talk a little bit about the driving dynamics of this car. I am extremely impressed. It feels extremely solid, really well controlled, and it actually performed really well in the rain. Uh, you know, that's partially to do with the tires, uh, whatever they put on them. But it, it felt very secure. I felt comfortable driving it. I, I didn't feel like the regen was doing anything unexpected or dangerous or anything like that. Uh, it was, it was a, a good cruise, of course, you know, driving in extremely heavy rain can always be a, a challenge and a little stressful, but I think this did a very good job of, of handling it. So interesting stuff going on here. Um, we have traveled just 80 miles and chewed through 45% of the battery, 45% remains. We have made it to the big summit and we are now down the backside of it. So hopefully it can gain some juice coming down this. I do see we are slightly using some, so maybe let's back this off a little bit. Let's kick in some regen so we're not using any throttle here and see if we can kind of coast down this hill and gain some back. So we are now showing 2% arrival into Beaver. It is still telling me stay below 70 to reach destination. Gosh, in my mind, 45%, 103 miles, that should be nothing for the Plaid. But, whoa, this is gonna be a tight one, guys. All right, I think we're looking pretty good to make it. I just had the window cracked there. We have 28 miles to go, 10%. We are still on our final climb, but it looks like we're gonna crest the final hill just up here. So let's bump it to 86. That's the maximum speed we can go. We'll probably arrive with a couple percent left, something like that. And uh, I think it'll be, that's the best way to maximize the car, considering I didn't charge it quite enough. But like I said, if we're able to catch the cars, catch the Taycan, catch the loot, the uh, Model S after a couple charge sessions, then this is road tripping king. I don't know what's gonna happen. All I know is I'm doing a lot of research for the next, the, the reverse race to Vegas where we're gonna be racing the whole way back to Colorado tomorrow. So that's gonna be epic. So now we've crested, I believe the final hill. Yes, here we are, summit. We are at elevation 7,886 feet. We are at 9%. The low battery warning is on. All the people that passed us, we're passing them back. And uh, man, the Lucid uh, range estimator, the predicted arrival just really did not factor in any kind of elevation at all. It's now even, I'm using Apple Maps because the Lucid nav is just like, good luck, you won't make it. So uh, we are all good now. Let's go full send to the whole way down. I should have picked up the speed a few miles earlier actually, but oh well. As per Lucid's recommendation, I'm gonna start the battery preconditioning process about 20 minutes away from the charger. It has really cooled off significantly outside from well over 100 degrees to 67. And the lowest we saw in this stretch was 59. So big temperature swings, but let's confirm that. Just because we have some extra in the tank now, we may as well precondition. So when we do get to a charger, hopefully we can get good speeds for longer. 
Not looking good for us here in the plaid other than we are increasing range because we're going so slow. But this freaking guy, what are we doing? We're doing 37 in a 55. I understand it's raining a little bit, but we're racing to Vegas, man. Well, I spoke too soon. The rain is back and it is gnarly. We are back to well under the speed limit here just because of traffic and weather conditions, but all the guys are gonna be hitting it too. But damn, this is some crazy ass rain. Oh my goodness. Thankfully, we're very close to Salina, only maybe five miles away now, something like that. Boy, the last probably, I don't know, five, 10 miles, I had to crank this thing down to 55. This car is all over the freaking road with the standing water. So just trying to be careful out here. It is, uh, yeah, I had some water just completely come over the hood at 50 miles an hour. So that was uh, a little bit of a pucker situation, if you will. And here we go again. So I'm gonna put this down and keep on driving. Rainy update time. I just got to Salina, Utah. That 350 uh, is stuck on idling. That 350 is uh, occupied with a Mach-E at 88% state of charge. Uh, we are still connecting and we have 12% state of charge. Oh no, maybe? It says 109, 106, 109, 110. We'll give it 30 seconds and then I'll swap over I think yeah unfortunately it looks like it might only do 110 so I'll try the next one there is the love station over there and I just got the notification that Ryan plugged in so he's got to be like two minutes ahead of us something like that and that's mostly just because I took it nice and easy um, you know because the lucid was like not enough range you're not gonna make it I'm like oh no did I miscalculate and it showed, no, I was actually dead on when we left. And it just freaked out because of the elevation. Anywho, we are on our way at max speed now, 86, to the exit. We're going to go full cannonball style, rip into the charging station, get charging. Let's hope, I know he took a 350 kilowatt station, I'm sure. Let's hope the other one was available. It wasn't when we left on this drive, but I would imagine they're gone by now. So fingers crossed we can get in and get out faster than the Taycan. Rainy update number two. Plugged in over on this 150 with the Chatamo. With this vehicle, I should get uh, over 170 kilowatts hypothetically on these 150s, but we'll see what we end up pulling. Hammer on over there, out of our way, Subaru. Speed limit's 50, we can get up to 55. Not concerned about efficiency right now. Just wanna get to the charger. Is he the only one here? Maki is here. Oh no, he's backing up. There must be some kind of issue. It says charging system not connected. Sick. Oh, well that went away. I guess we're gonna be doing the limited charging speeds. So the Maki people from Green River stretched it here? What the heck? They gotta get out of here. All right, let's see what's gonna happen. He's moving around, I don't know why. I don't know why, why would he move around? Oh, because the other 350 kilowatt charger is broken. And the mach is at 100%. Are you kidding me? 93%. Get these people up. So are you charging? Only 100 kilowatts. Dang. Well, maybe you should have been slower. You could have grabbed this one as the mach was leaving. So in we go here. Ah, uh, there's a two-hander. Got these cables. <laughs> Ryan wasn't fast enough on the draw here. What he should have done was pull into this spot so he would have the option either way. <laughs> but now we are good. We're plugged in, connecting to vehicle. Fingers crossed we get the high speeds of the, there we go, payment authorized. And initiating. <laughs> yes, yes. How fast are we gonna go? Why was the Mach-E full charging? I think we just got lucky here. So this thing is completely dead, needs a reset. So uh, Kyle ended up actually snaking us. Uh, so we're stuck on the one, 112 kilowatts and uh, 
I think that that goes our advantage, unfortunately. But, I mean, we can still give it an effort and uh, see what we can do. Oh no, things are not looking good. I tried to snag the 350 kilowatt charger here, but you'll notice we have some really bad signet surge. Crazy to me that this has been going on for a year now, or just about, and it's still not fixed. It means that we should be getting over 300 kilowatts, close to 350 kilowatts. But instead, no, we're getting 30 to 50. Meanwhile, Ryan over here in the Tycon, even though I forced him on the 150 just to slow him down. <laughs> he wanted to rock, paper, scissors. I'm like, get out of my way. He's at 112 kilowatts, which actually is a lot faster than I'm charging. So let's tell him what's going on. So I'm at 30 to 50 kilowatts. Oh shit, So you, you got, you're, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, anytime, Kyle. It's the Signet Surge. Oh, is it? Yeah. That was... So it'll ramp up here in a minute. Nice. Oh, the lightning's coming. Oh, yeah. You know, the people in the ID4 at the last stop were like genu genuinely concerned that it was about to rain and they were going to charge. Oh, no. That's... Yeah. They need some education. Yeah, that, I said out of spec guide. Look it up on YouTube. Uh, anyway, things are not looking great here, but... Uh, this is what killed us on the cannonball. We surge for a bit and then we come out of it. There we are coming out of it. Hundred and, oh, well, I was gonna say we're coming out of it, but we're better. But the, you can't unplug and move. It makes no difference. You just gotta eat your way through the surge. So you'll get full send and then it comes back into the surge. So we just gotta eat it, but we'll take it while we can. That charger again, completely down. Crazy. So as it turns out, uh, Karma exists. Kyle's only getting like 34 kilowatts. He's getting some signet surge. My plan is to just make it to Beaver, 78 miles. I'm not sure how much we'll need. So my idea for you is since you're just sitting here charging at a measly 113 kilowatts, why don't you call EA and have them reset this one and then you can get faster charging. Why don't you call them? No, I'm, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm getting all the speeds I need. Yeah, not <laughs> but, a bad but idea. But isn't it crazy that you would have to like call a company and say, can you reset the charger that should be connected to your system? Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, 357 minutes of idle time. So now they're just about to start charging idle fees again. That dude's gonna get a big bill. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll give him a call. Well, big decision time and I think I'm gonna go for it. So here's Richfield right here. We are 65 miles away from Beaver. We are at 32% state of charge. So if we could average the normal three miles per kilowatt hour, we would have roughly around 100-ish miles range, probably more like 90. So we're gonna push it. It's still saying 2%. We no longer have our, um, our banner up here saying keep below 75. I've got it set at 80. I'm not gonna try and push it quite yet. We've got a big hill to climb here. And then hopefully on the backside, we can really gain some regen. Um, coming into Beaver. This is going to be a tight one. I'm going to need to kind of look after Beaver to where we're going next. Um, yeah, this will be interesting. Kyle and um, Kyle and Ryan are already charging back in Salina at the EA. They may even be gone. Uh, never know. Unfortunately, we're going to have to call Colton and tell him that we are both getting garbage charging experiences here. You're getting less than half of what the Tycon wants and I'm getting a fourth, a third of the Lucid, depends on when it surges, because we go from 50 to 100 and something. Uh, and what's crazy is sometimes it'll surge so hard that the motors will start to pulse on the Lucid, oh. which I'm like, I don't think that's a good situation. I don't even know how the energy could transfer to the motors. That's it. Uh, quite concerning. That is very concerning. Yeah, we had to hold it on the brake pedal at once because it was just like, don't, 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 just crazy. So anyway, we're going to be here for some time, both of us. I don't know what the next stop is, but I want it to be an ABB charger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan, well, we just ran in and I got some Red Bull and snacks and stuff, a little bathroom break. Uh, both of our charging sessions have been uh, absolutely terrible. Yes, that's and correct. I think mine's worse than yours. I would agree. Which uh, you said you couldn't get that charger to work on the left. So we're technically maxed out. There's no room for another car here. That's right. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> and, um, so let's see what we have here. You've put in 23 kilowatt hours. What am I at, 16 or so? But I'm more efficient than you. So let's see what happens here. We're both going to the ABB station in Beaver. Whoever gets out of here first gets the 350 kilowatt, basically. <laughs> Is there just one? 
Uh, well, if there's the, if that Mach E's going there and doing a hundred percent charge again, <laughs> probably. Toward the end of the charging on the Taycan, and I wanted to show you some Signet Surge. You can see kilowatts right there, and obviously fluctuating back and forth. And with different vehicles, the batteries operate at different voltages. And what we think is happening is when the the chargers reach a certain voltage, it goes haywire. It doesn't know what to do, how how much amperage to provide, and that uh, voltage number will be different on different cars. So I think I'll end up uh, stopping the session and try to head over to Beaver now. Well, that is bad news. Ryan is unplugging and we are sitting here at 60 kilowatts with the charging power limited by the station. And it, w it wouldn't matter what station we go to because this is Signet Surge. You just gotta push through it. I think at 23% state of charge, it unlocks. But thankfully the next charging station, even though they're all Electrify America, is a different brand of hardware that works great with the Lucid, it's ABB. And so we really wanna get to that Beaver charger as quickly as possible. So let's type in here, Beaver. Gosh, the cup holders are in the worst possible place imaginable, or the screen is, I'm not sure. But ergonomically, that doesn't work. Beaver, Utah, Elec, Trify. Let's see if it comes up. Boom, that's Salina, crap. Oh, don't make me type it in again. <laughs> that was too fast. I don't know, it's 80 miles. I don't think we could do 400 miles right now with the rain. Beaver, Utah, it should just be like first thing. I mean, no one in Elucid is going to Beaver, Utah other than to charge. Beaver, why would that be the second option? Anyway, go, 61.8 miles. It wants us here another, let's see what it wants. Salina, Utah till 35% and we'll get there at 12. We're currently at 21. So we need a little bit more. And it thinks five minutes, but it doesn't realize how poor our charging is. But I think once we hit 23%, it'll crank the dial up a little bit. Let's hope. So I'm charging on this unit, getting Signet Surge. Ryan's already plugged in and left. He had Signet Surge in the Tycon, but it's not as bad. This charger is uh, broken, and the one on the end is broken as well. So uh, things are going, things are going poorly. Back on the road in the Tycon, I was able to get out of that charger before Kyle left. So we are ahead of him. We've got a 7% buffer to make it to Beaver, Utah, only about an hour away. And hopefully we'll be able to make it there before him. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, we should do that. And we hopefully will get the 350 charger. Um, I think it'll be key uh, for either of us. I think whoever has perfect charging will win. Uh, and if it's both of us that has perfect charging from now on, I think it'll be very, very close. But let's keep it, keep it going and hopefully we can edge out ahead of Kyle and get the 350 and make it to Vegas. Well, maybe I was wrong about the 23% thing. I couldn't remember the exact percentage and it's somewhere in the 20s. It might be 25 or 27. Anyway, it's in all the cannonballing videos, but we're at 24% just sitting in that 40 kilowatt range right now, taking forever. We've been here 20 minutes. We've only delivered 25 kilowatt hours to the car. The other 350 kilowatt in front of me is still broken. Oh, gosh. <laughs> when am I gonna stop torturing myself and just only make Tesla content? Because this stuff sucks. Oh, look, look, there we go. So 25, 26%, it goes up and it starts ripping. Uh -huh. Why is that a thing, Signet? It's like EA bought the crappiest hardware on the planet. Signet, apparently, my impression. It's just the worst chargers. These things used to rock. They just hate high voltage cars. They really, I, I believe they're replacing power modules and all this stuff, but there we are, up to 200 kilowatts. That's freaking awesome. So now we're, now we're zooming. What do we do now? Do we just stay plugged in? Maybe I can see if I can skip Beaver. Let's uh, let's see what's next past Beaver. Maybe we can make it to Cedar City or one of these. Well, Cedar City's Signet, we can't do that. Oh, I gotta see where we can stretch it okay, to. Okay, well, just because we're zooming along right now, which is good, it's not amazing charging speeds, but it's, it's, it's we're charging at some reasonable rate. I thought maybe we should at least explore using 
the range of this car. 180 miles is nothing for it. That'd be 50% state of charge. So I think we skip Beaver because we know we're not going to beat Ryan to Beaver and Colton's heading straight to Beaver. But if we can do a deep enough charge and use the efficiency of this car, as long as we don't get big surge again, we should be able to do 180 miles at roughly 55% state of charge. So we just need roughly 20% more state of charge. We're already at 33 because I can't go to Cedar City because we'll get Signet Surge. So that's, it's not even worth going there. And then Beaver is full right now. It's completely jammed and Ryan's heading to a full station. So I'm thinking we just push it past. We're getting 170 kilowatts. We will get Surge again starting soon, but let's take the good juice while we can. Here comes the ID4 that we saw in uh, Green River. That's awesome. We're still buzzing along here, 160 kilowatts. I think we just take it and use the efficiency and try and pass the guys. Um, and basically just meet them over. I don't know what their stops are gonna be, but I think if we just go basically to Washington or St. George, that's our best plan. Another 10% and then we can hit the road. You can see here, now we're starting to surge. So we just gotta eat through it for the next 10%. I hope it's not as bad as the early state of charge surge, but we'll find out. Oh boy, this guy's killing me up here. So it's one lane road. I'm between Salina and uh, Beaver right now. Look at where we're at now. 7% we're gonna roll in with. Still 19% state of charge, 34 miles. So I'm kind of thinking our next stop after this is probably gonna be St. George and then probably St. George straight to Vegas, roll in dead as dead. Um, we'll have to play with that. May need to stop in Mesquite, I'm hoping not. Um, I wanna get the best of the charging curve on this thing pull out quick and just go. So we're gonna have to play with this. This is where it gets really interesting. I know Kyle's having some signet surge issues. Um, Ryan was having some issues as well, it sounded like, um, but he's on the road behind me. So I gotta be watching out for Ryan. Otherwise, this is gonna be really, really tricky. It is so hard for me to figure out what state of charge to leave in this car, unlike Tycon, which has a great state of charge arrival that you can trust because it factors in some really important things like elevation. This car is pretty difficult to remove charging stops and really time this because I can't get rid of this thing and it doesn't update as we're charging. I have to end and redo each time. Interestingly, I've just been checking the weather maps because we're getting very close to where we need to unplug and I want to leave as soon as possible because we're in the Signet surge range getting poor charging. And uh, again, it beats getting stuck in Beaver at a full station, but um, yeah, still not ideal. There is some massive wind, headwind picking up through here as we go down I-15. Now we also lose elevation. So I'm hoping for a fairly average result. You see, this was a pretty poor run, 105 miles, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour to get here. We had the big rain, the big elevation, but we lost some, but still fairly inefficient uh, compared to the first leg at 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour over the entire Rocky Mountain range. So I'm just not sure if we should plan for 3.7, 3.8, or twos, um, basically I think no matter what, I'll give it to 51%. We'll just take that 1% extra buffer and we're gonna leave. And worst case, if it looks like we're really gonna run out, we can bail out, there's a few options in between, but I'm here to win this thing. This car needs all the help it can get. It's really not a fault of the Lucids other than Lucid charges on this network. So, you know, you, you, like I said, you gotta tie car and chargers as one. Uh, because the Lucid charges very poorly on the Signet branded Electrify America chargers in comparison to ABB or their others. All right, it is getting time to unplug the Lucid. Finally, 36 minutes and we just hit 50% state of charge. Ryan could have done three and a half, zero to 50% charging sessions if the infrastructure would just work. The Colton's zooming along, having no issues. Like I said, we're gonna wait till 51. There we go, 51, 58 kilowatt hours in 37 minutes and truly a terrible performance here uh, from Electrify America and Signet. No other way of putting it. I don't know how anyone can say this is the best road tripping car if these two last charging stops are what you experience with it. And this is what I keep experiencing with this car. So I guess just keep using AC charging, charge it home in your Lucids and enjoy it a little bit more. Let's uh, get the heck out of here. We'll try and optimize as much as we can kids walking in front of us so thanks for stopping we'll see all them later great people 
and we are off. Well, I've backed the speeds off from 86 miles an hour to 80 because our distance to our consumption is going in the wrong direction. If you look here, we're getting 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour in the last 13 miles. That's very bad, um, really bad. And we really need that to be closer to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour, not 2.6, and that's a big jump. Some cops up here sitting, waiting for us to come through, but we're going the speed limit. And um, yep, so I'm just gonna back it down. We may have to make a quick detour and top up on a bailout option. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm rolling through some construction here in the Tycon on my way to Beaver. Uh, the speed limit's actually 65, so I could be going 70. Unfortunately, struck behind some trucks have been for like nine or 10 miles now, but hopefully it'll clear up soon. Pulling into beautiful Beaver now. It is perfect weather out right now. 87 degrees. We are rocking 7% state of charge. So what we're going to arrive at 1.3 miles away. We are headed to St. George next, 104 miles away. So I'm going to do some math while we're charging. Probably charge uh, around 40%. I would think we're gonna see, we're gonna try and get the most of this curve. I gotta pee really bad. So we're gonna get this thing plugged in, juiced up on the road and keep on moving on. All right, plugging in here on the 250s. We're gonna go with one A, boom in. Let's make sure we're juicing. Let's start juicing. Ramping up. 60, 114, 146, 147. Let's go, baby. All right, we're gonna jump. I'm gonna try a different one. That's not enough. That's not enough juice. Try 2A over here. Well, that was weird. Maybe I'm uh, not understanding the curve here, but uh, yeah, my understanding one was we should get, bam, 250, just like we did before. So let's see here. In. Give me the juice. Let's make sure we turn off AC here. Still the same. Let's go, let's go. Here we go, now we're pumping numbers. Probably should have stayed put in that one, but didn't want to mess around. 200 now, 209, 218, 230. 236, 240, 245, 250. Boom. Based off of the notifications I'm getting on my phone right now, I think Colton is confused as to why the Plaid is charging slow. He plugged in at 7%, I think was what I saw, and then he plugged in again at nine, and it's just not ramping up to 250 kilowatts. And that's because Colton doesn't ever really run his Model 3 all the way to zero. Teslas do that. When you run them low, they take a, a slower charge initially, maybe 130, 150 kilowatts for a short period of time, maybe 200 seconds at most, something like that. And then whoop, you'll get right up to the max speed. So I guess he's still learning some Tesla stuff. I texted him, don't unplug, just keep it in. It will ramp up to full speed. Oh well. We made it through the construction, past those slower trucks, and on the move again. Uh, about 20 minutes from Beaver. We'll have 11% state of charge when you arrive. Would be a bit lower if we could have gone faster for those miles, but no worries. It is what it is. And uh, we'll try to make uh, the best time that we still can. So now let's put in, we're gonna go to, we're gonna go, oops, hello. I do not wanna go back to Green River. That was a freaking disaster. So charging here, we're gonna go to the south one. Let's see what we need. 
So 17% juice we need to put in this thing. So approximately be um, somewhere around 30%. I'm probably gonna do either 35 or 40. Need to check if we are going uphill or how this is gonna work. But since we're juicing up, I'm gonna go run inside and run to the bathroom. And here it is, time for our one turn. Woo! Time to go on I-15 South. Not, not north, so. And there it is, wow, look at that turn. Cool. Great, so just looked and basically we've got a little uphill out of Beaver here into St. George and then it's all downhill. So don't need a ton of range. We're gonna be super efficient on this one. Believe we're actually probably pretty good to go. I'm gonna give myself a slight buffer because I think Ryan's behind us. 35% state of charge, 3%. Um, let's look at the efficiency on that last charge. Okay, so it wiped itself out already. Um, darn it, should have shown that. But nonetheless, we are at 202 kilowatts right now. Still ripping pretty good. And uh, already dumped in 26 kilowatt hours. These V3s are just magical. Time to unplug and get on the road. Jump back in the plaid here. I gave myself a little bit of buffer. We're still getting great charging speeds here. Time to roll. So 10% looks like we're gonna roll into St. George, another 250 there. I swear guys, these freaking cars are insane. I barely have enough time to go pee before the freaking car is ready to rock and roll. Just insane. Love, loving this experience. Here we are, Beaver. Okay, thanks so much. I'll give it a Made it to Beaver, Utah with a pack of Lucids. Unfortunately, they are uh, taking the three that are working. Uh, the one that I'm parked at does not work, won't activate uh, with the app, with cards, with anything. Um, so I'm just gonna have to wait until someone else is done, unfortunately. But the good news is they're Lucids, so shouldn't be too long. Move out of the way. We're doing 48 miles an hour. Crazy. Ryan just sent me a photo that all of the Lucids are clogging up the station in Beaver that he's at. So it sounds like a good thing we stayed back overcharged and we'll be able to skip. No question the infrastructure is not keeping up with electric vehicle sales. And uh, can't wait to see Tesla just go turn it up to 11 and build out all the infrastructure needed uh, for all of these cars. Truly, I think they'll make it happen. I'm not going to say it's going to be the easiest transition to next, but... They're the only company who has proven that they can reliably charge a large number of vehicles on road trips, which is all we've been wanting forever. Just please. And uh, so I guess Ryan's hanging out with the Lucid employees, waiting in line to charge. So it sounds like Ryan's having an issue. He's waiting in line in Beaver, Utah, where we just charged up. Um, one charger down, and it looked like there were three Lucids there. Not Kyle's Lucid, Kyle's still behind a little bit with that Signet Surge issue he had. But let me give you a quick update here on our efficiency. 414 watt hour per mile. We burned nine kilowatt hours in the last 23 miles. We have 32% state of charge and looks like we're still gonna make it to St. George at 8%. So this thing is just rocking. I am just loving this thing really kind of figuring out this car and understanding its capabilities. This is really the first time I've pushed a car like this, especially not one of my own. And it's really different to, uh, to kind of figure everything out, but I'm really kind of getting a feel for it here. And uh, yeah, look at the weather out here. It is freaking stunning. 96 degrees, a hot one to say the least. We still have yet to precondition at all. Um, oh, 
don't don't do that. We don't want to lose autopilot again. So uh, yeah, rocking and rolling here. We'll see you in St. George. And then final leg to Vic. And finally, way behind the other guys, we merge onto I-15. We're going to rip this corner. No brakes here. Speed limit 65. We ain't slowing down. So uh, we might have a chance. If Ryan gets held up long enough, I might be able to squeeze past him. Because if this thing charges on chargers that can deliver the full power, I'm fairly certain this can beat the Tycon. It's just finding chargers that work well with the Lucid is such a pain. Speed limit 85. Things are looking good. Hammer down. Let's hope that headwind isn't crazy as we get farther south. Colton's already left Beaver and is heading to St. George, so he also started with a higher state of charge than us, but I'm going to add a time penalty for how long it took us all to charge. That might help even things out a little bit. We'll see. The real race will be in the next video, but this is kind of fun. Folks, we have made the right decision. Ryan is just off of this exit and he has not yet plugged in the Tycon. He is at the Beaver Charger. He's in line with all those Lucids. And I am on to the next Charger. It's a good thing we stayed. We're maximizing the charging infrastructure. This is a game of, I don't even know what. It's just a game of luck at this point, road tripping a CCS car. But uh, we're using the efficiency of the Lucid. Everything is looking good. 30% uh, to go 100 miles. That should be easily doable, even with some headwind. Um, so there's Ryan over there. The day's in. That's where the Charger is. I wonder if you can hear us. I can see just the tips of the EA Chargers behind those trucks. Yeah, I bet you won't see it from this angle. No, yeah, there you will. I can see the see all the loose. It's charging. Crazy. Let's see if we can take a sneak peek in this way. Where is Ryan? Somewhere back over there. Anyway, we are now in second place, my friends. See you later, Ryan. About 40 minutes later, and looks like we're in business. Let's plug this in. Wrangle with one hand. Can. Nope, two hands. Click. Okay, I'm gonna get back in the car because it's raining. Plug and charge should work. Looks like it's connecting to vehicle. Screen just changed up on the Electrify America station. It just moved to 27 miles from 26, but it still does not say, oh, there it goes, 174. And that's 177, nice. That's uh, peak speeds we could expect out of the 150 kilowatt unit. Uh, again, this is an 800 volt architecture vehicle, so we can get a bit above that 150 uh, number. But unfortunately, that was about 40 minute delay. Um, I'm of course gonna keep on going, do the best I can. Finishing up here in Beaver, Utah. Been charging just nine minutes. Still at about 170 kilowatts. It's been holding that the whole time. It can hold that for quite a while. My next stop is St. George, uh, just north of there. And it's about 102 miles. It says I'll need about 40% state of charge, but there's a pretty nasty headwind. So I've got a decent buffer going. And you can see all those stats. I'll go ahead and stop it. There we go. Quick 10 minute top up. And enough to get to St. George, which should be our last stop of the day. Well, just had a chat with Kyle and looks like he has one more stop in St. George as well. We are 13 miles away, 5% state of charge we'll arrive with and 9% left on the vehicle. So we are then trying to go directly to Vegas and we're actually hanging out at Resorts World tonight. So it is exactly 120 miles from this supercharger. So I'm thinking around 45 
percent we should be good to rock and roll now the only thing that i want to consider is charging when we get there so kyle said spend a few more minutes put in a little bit more juice so probably realistically looking at 50 percent 52 percent somewhere in there and we'll get that taken care of as we slow down here with this truck so we're coming into st george utah crazy crazy drive we've had today i feel so bad for ryan he has been sitting there uh, at green river and then sitting there in beaver like ccs cars what is happening this i mean the tesla has been just mint today so i did talk to kyle about what i did wrong at the beaver supercharger there he said when you plug in the plaid it'll go basically to around um i think we were getting 150 there and i was like oh this is not enough he said normally takes a little while like maybe 90 seconds or so for it to kick in he said so at this next v3 in saint george plug that bad boy in let her rip let her eat and just keep it there so yeah really uh enjoying the plaid here this thing is just i mean what more can you ask for in a big gt so rolling into st george now 0.5 miles to the supercharger five percent we brought this thing in at freaking awesome 111 degrees yikes this looks like a great area for charging um be curious to see how easy it is to get back on the interstate uh, but really simple it looks like to get off here so just gonna gently cruise over to the supercharger here and we'll get this bad boy ripping so yeah i'm thinking right at 50 percent i'm gonna unplug this thing um we do have a 10 mile an hour headwind into vegas um per the tesla here so want to make sure that we account for that 120 miles on the dot to resorts world and we are done for the drive today there we go pop out here oh it is toasty out here that is no lie so not sure there's anywhere to go to the bathroom here that's super fun uh so yikes all right so we may just be chilling here so let's see what it does here see if i learned a little from my last session so yep same thing right at 140 here yeah this has a really weird area here no bathrooms in sight no real stores in sight um there is a museum over there i guess you could go run over there but not really seeing all that much here so we're now pumping this thing up 184 192 let's get it give me that juice so looks like we're right here capped at 238 wonder if the battery is slightly toasty um also gosh dang it i keep forgetting this okay so we're gonna turn the ac off see how this goes see if it ramps up anymore i'll definitely need to turn it on because it is freaking hot out here we have finally passed Cedar City a little while ago and the car is freaking out. It says no key detected and the, the side cameras are missing. Uh, where, where'd they go? When you hit the turn signals before, it would show up with the little side cameras. So I don't know what's going on, but it seems to be not happy about those two things. What it is fine with though, is it says we're gonna make it to the charging station at 8%. Uh, it kept trying to pull us into different chargers and like 8% is plenty. So, yeah, off we go to Cedar City. Nope, off we go to St. George, Washington. It says 28 miles on arrival. That's plenty. I'm going the maximum speed the test allows me to go. We have a beautiful day. The wind seems to have died down a little bit. Colton is charging in St. George. He is about 30 minutes ahead of us. Uh, but again, he's going to get more of a time penalty. So the Lucid's still in the race. If I can get a really fast charging session, we might actually have him. We'll see. Let's see how this goes. All right, so we're down to 192 now. I did see it dip into, I believe, the 180s. Kyle told me throw a wet rag on it, see if that'll help it a little bit, cool it down, give it more juice. I am having my first issue here. Um, we are not going to the Venetian. I was trying this. Let me show you what's going on here. So I'm trying to click on Resorts World, and it just sits here and calculates and doesn't give me a battery percentage of when we're going to be there. 
So we may have to kind of guess on this. There we go. Why is it going now? So it's telling me right at about 50%, um, we're going to have no buffer. I'm wondering why it's thinking we need so much. Maybe because of the heat. Um, does look like there's a cracker barrel over here. So I may go walk over there, use the restroom. We got another two hours in the car before we get to Vegas. So I'm going to go take a quick rest stop here and uh get back on the road all right strategy time we're rolling up to the beaver uh nope why well, get all the names confused we are rolling up to the saint george also known as washington electrify america station we have 19 minutes left to go there is a 350 kilowatt option so let's go here let's go charging let's go to start preconditioning confirm there's this and I'm only preconditioning because I have some extra to burn and I figured well let's cool down the battery pack if we do get the 350 kilowatt one because it's already 105 and Colton says it's 117 all the way down in the valley in St. George. I'm also getting a little um, uh, thingamajiggy here this little white space which means usually a software update uh, about yeah new software okay let's see what we improve learn more estimated update time big okay well i updated the car like yesterday so they keep sending updates to this thing and um wow infotainment system updates alternate routes ah oh, look at this hvac and defrost setting charger availability it's like everything we needed um there like yesterday now we have big dream drive updates. Oh, I'm definitely gonna update all of this for the, um, oh, it'll automatically do battery preconditioning, scheduled charging's location based. This is a huge freaking update. So we'll make sure this is all done before the return race to Vegas. Can't wait to try these out. And um, pretty cool that it's all happening right here in real time. Just talked to Kyle. Man, he has gained some ground on me here. So he's about, I think, 25 miles away from St. George here. And uh, I think he's going to have more problems charging at EA. He said it's full. There's only one 350 working. Ay, ay, ay. I tell you what, these CCS cars. So uh, we're definitely derated on power here. Um, we do have some elevation gains going into Vegas, unlike I kind of anticipated. Now we do have a backup plan if we get on the road and we're just like, yeah, I, we can't make it. Um, and that would be in Mesquite. Um, but I think we're okay here. So I'm gonna give myself probably like an 8% buffer here. So maybe a little bit higher not i wasn't anticipating this i mean it is super hot do have a little elevation gain and we do have headwinds so definitely something to consider we're still going to try and get there as quickly as possible we've got resorts world plugged in an hour 49 minutes from here and 121 miles so looking good here i'm going to probably charge this five six more percent and we're going to unplug and head to vegas we are really ramped down now, 104 kilowatts, 9% buffer, 63% state of charge. What do you guys say? Well, let's go unplug this thing, get on the road. Man, it is so hot out here. I do not know how people live here, holy smokes. So wet rag off, that actually did seem to help. And this thing is freaking toasty now. Hop in the plaid. Well, let's rock and roll. And now it's saying 11% and jumped from 14. On the road we go yet again. Just missed it, but we just crossed into Arizona. And man, we got a huge buffer here. I thought the route planning was definitely off. So we're 27 minutes or 27 miles. I don't know, whatever. We're having a heck of a good time. Welcome to St. George, Utah. We have arrived at 8% state of charge. Perfectly planned, if I do say so myself. Um, actually, the wind and headwind that I was expecting kind of dissipated. So I think it was perfectly planned, assuming we had a little bit more headwind coming towards us. Uh, we are just down the street from the charger. This is the same charger that uh, Ryan's going to be heading to as well. So I'm fairly certain our fate is sealed. Colton's already left. He's on his way. He's going to win. We need to see how much time penalty he has, but I think either way, Model S wins this one. The infrastructure just really let the Lucid down, as is always the story. And then the Tycon is... Um, Tyke, oh, the AC is 
ripping on this Lucid right now, preconditioning the battery. It's 110 degrees indicated outside, crazy. Uh, and then the Taycan just got totally screwed by that fleet of Lucid manufacturer cars. Who thinks they set out to block that station, to block Ryan? <laughs> that could be really funny if that was the case. Uh, but I also wouldn't put it past Lucid. That seems like a very Lucid thing to do. Anyway, uh, I think Ryan probably would have won or it would have been so close between this and the uh, Taycan if he didn't get held up at that station. So very much looking forward to tomorrow, seeing what happens, following this pretty sick Jeep Gladiator on 35s or 37s, it's on some meaty tires. And uh, let's head on over to the Charger. And here we are pulling into Wally World. Let's go. There is a Lucid Air charging here. So this would be now the fourth Lucid Air we've seen on this trip because Ryan has seen three others. My guess is they're probably on the one working 350 kilowatt charger. I need to reference the app, figure out which one we can plug into and then get plugged in. Ooh, I do like that Zenith red color though. That is hot. Turns out there's some viewers in the Lucid over here and our car is like freaking out. All the, the backup cameras won't work, all that stuff. So. Anyway, they said they were able to get this 350 kilowatt charger working, but very poor speeds. It says members only credit card. All right, let's see if plug and charge works and we can get this thing woo, juicing. When it's so hot out here, the cables are like wet noodles. You can actually just bend it right in with one hand. So let's see what happens. It's connecting. I should shut climate control off in the vehicle. We need every bit of thermal help here possible, but it is only a 150 kilowatt station. Where are the 350s and what's going on with them? So this is a 350 and it says it's available. I'm gonna try this station. So we are plugged in. It's just stuck on no key detected. Like it won't even connect to my Bluetooth, which is crazy. Uh, initiating charging. I also don't have the backup key for this car, so I hope it'll activate it because <laughs> Ryan has the key. I guess he'll be here anytime soon anyway, or I should say the key card. All right, so we are going. Why are we on a 150? I thought that this was a 350 when I pulled in. It looked like it. We really should try this unit right here, hyper fast. Okay, but look at this, 246 kilowatts. Uh, how does that make any sense from a 150? This must be mislabeled. That's right. Charger 4 in the app is a 350. Uh, what, what? I've never seen this before. Sometimes you'll get 175 kilowatts. That's technically what they're rated for, but I've never seen 246 kilowatts, 250 kilowatts on a 150. This must be a 350 kilowatt charger that someone labeled wrong. There's no other explanation here. It's freaking ripping, 260 kilowatts. I don't know why the other Lucid had problems charging here because this thing's screaming and it's exactly what the car wants because usually it would say limited due to charging station. So this is what we need. So how much juice do we need to get to Vegas? Let's turn off climate control, let everything, if we're getting this fast charging, I want the battery to stay as cool as possible. It's 110 degrees out here. This is freaking epic. Whoa, this is what we're talking about. This is why we came to this station. It's how we can win on the return. Hell yes. So, um, all right, I gotta put in Las Vegas. I gotta put in our destination resorts world. And I think we might, we're gonna be here just for a quick splash down. This is definitely one of my favorite areas here in between uh, St. George and Mesquite, I guess. Just stunning. Now, the funny thing is, speed limit's 55 here. And like that FedEx truck just came blowing by me. So yeah, the five over thing's great. There's sometimes you feel like you're holding up traffic or you're gonna get completely ran over like this Tiguan crossing the line. So, you know, just fun stuff here. But man, the views out here are incredible. Okay, I've entered the address here. We're still doing 240 kilowatts. Now we're talking, here's the magic. Let's keep this going. All right, it says it wants us to charge here till 45% and then we'll arrive at 13. So why don't we charge here to 35% and then we'll arrive there at three. That's the out of spec style. So we'll be here for slightly more. Cable cooling's making some weird ass noises, technical term, but we're still ripping. Look at that, three minutes, 12 kilowatt hours. Why couldn't we have this all trip? So, and we're the only ones here, which is crazy. Windy for sure, definitely noticing that headwind that we were having. But now we're talking 110 degree heat, sending the juice. If we can just get this tomorrow on the return race to Fort Collins, 
we will win this. Because this car is so much more efficient than the others. But man, can you just believe these views? This is so sweet. We are now just a few minutes into the session. We've added over 100 miles of rated range, still doing 200 kilowatts at 28%, absolutely ripping. The AC compressor is pegged at max right now, just sending it as hard as it can. And I'm trying to get out of here before Ryan even gets here. So I recommended he use this one because I'm here to help everyone out. I'm not here to take advantage of everyone. I want everyone to get the fastest times possible. We all know the result for this video but let's see how this all goes. All right, we are now charged up to 34%. We need just a couple more percent to make it, but since we're getting close, let's crank on the AC at max while we're connected so we can pull all the extra power from the charger to cool the cabin. So we'll go windows up on everything. And I got all the shades closed in the back, of course, every last opportunity to advance this fantastic charging session uh you know lucid has a pretty poor charging curve but at least here we're following it that's all we've wanted so i have everything maxed out right now and it's warm almost warm air coming out of here but that's okay it's uh extreme temperature extreme charging all the ac has to go to the battery pack so we'll see what happens when we start moving yeah maybe one or two more percent and then we'll unplug. all right well it's time to unplug and head out of here so let's take a look at our charge stats so far we have charged 10 minutes is all we had here 37 kilowatt hours it is definitely not a 150 kilowatt charger this is labeled 350 in the app someone put the wrong stickers on here you would think that'd be a simple task but these are the hard things electrify america has to deal with and do unplug time to rip cable back in there sometimes this doesn't like to close with a little bit of help there we go close put it in reverse terry we're going there we go and the camera still not working <laughs> anyway everyone out of our way get these bollards out of the front of these chargers they ruin it for people trying to tow okay full send nation <laughs> it's time to optimize as much as possible. I don't know what Colton's time penalty is, and I think it might be pretty close. So let's go do it. What's going to be faster, the Soul or the Sportage? Did we choose the correct lane? I don't know. I thought the Sportage would be faster because it's got sport in the name, but also the Soul driven by hamsters that are trying to get somewhere real fast. Oh boy, the things that we have to choose between on the race to Vegas. Let's go. We need the red light to turn. We're just frying this battery back. We just fast charged it and now it's just sitting on hot pavement. I want to get some airflow under this thing. I want to get it moving. Oh, damn. The sole really freaking hit the throttle there. <laughs> and there's a guy next to us, so we can't move over. Come on, Sportage. Let's go. Harness your heritage and use the right pedal. We got to go. <laughs> yeah, there's actually no huge rush from our side. We're second place unless we crash or run out of juice or something crazy happens or Ryan's flying and he's already ahead of us. I don't know, I have his location, he's back there. Welcome to Arizona, this car's birth state. It was born, manufactured on the other side of the state in Casa Grande, Arizona. And uh, we're just through a little sliver, probably the most beautiful stretch of highway. Actually, I believe this drive that we do, the race to Vegas, goes through two of the most beautiful stretches of highway, Glenwood Canyon in Colorado, and then this section down here through Arizona. I'll give you some clips so you can see what it's like. Just next level gorgeous. Okay, pulled in. We are in uh, Mesquite. Sorry, St. George. Uh, we're in St. George. I just plugged in. As you can see, this is marked as a 150, but I got a tip from Kyle. Use the right plug on this one. Um, it's a pretty easy leg. Uh, about 100 or so miles, hour and a half or so. Um, nothing eventful, really. There it goes. 112 kilowatts. 240. Look at that. Ripping. 
247 milliwatts it says. So obviously this is mislabeled. This is definitely a 350 unit, but we're getting some charge. So just got back from the bathroom, literally plugged in, walked over, went to the bathroom, came back. Dang. Not gonna need to be here long. I'm gonna hop in the car, do some route planning and see exactly how much we need. I think it'll be just about 50%, but I'll take a look. Okay, yeah, I was about right. About 50% state of charge is what we'll need. And we're at 55. Still ripping 207 kilowatts, but uh, feels like a shame to stop while it's still ripping, but it's time to go. Those fans are ripping. It is 107 Fahrenheit out right now, so understandable. Let's hop in the car and get going on this final leg. It's 126 miles and uh, hour and 57 minutes. Check out these views as we come down into the canyon. I mean, it is next level and this awesome windshield here I'll show you in the lucid air comes all the way up above my head so neat I just wish these could get out of the way you can move these like that then you get a true panoramic view but then your head hits this thing they need like a model x situation where the side ones you know attached to the a pillar anyway beautiful drive no complaints from my side 110 degrees in the shade in the canyon it's real toasty up there out there in the sun and we're just having to go slow i probably overcharged a little bit i forgot that we had to go you know five over the speed limit but either way it doesn't change the result uh, we're all learning the cars and we're ready to rip tomorrow it's going to be absolutely epic and with this windshield it really is need to soak up all the views i also notice every time the car loses service i lose lane centering i don't know what that they have to do with each other but it, whenever it loses service it says it's unavailable in this area but uh, very weird we are rolling into mesquite where we've charged many times but we still have 27 percent we should be able to make it to vegas 114 degrees outside air conditioning working great in the lucid i've never felt airflow like this in this car and i've had the fan maxed out on my face so i don't know what i'm doing differently now to where it's working so well but i was driving this car the other day sweating getting no airflow out of the vents and now we're getting some airflow this vent definitely stronger than this vent but it's it's totally bearable and the sun's beating right on me and it's 114 degrees out so i i don't know why the air conditioning would be so inconsistent other than maybe this car got some updates in between them and they've improved it and sounds like they're improving it again cruising through the middle of the desert huge solar panel field over here to my right a little hard to see now but man we are really ripping now so 26 percent state of charge left in the battery pack and it looks like we're gonna get to resorts world right at 11 percent state of charge so 37 miles to go 36 minutes and there it is pulling into resorts world and we've got the timer once we hit the parking garage we're gonna turn the timer off just talked with kyle and uh He's a little ways away, so I'll be waiting for him, and uh, Ryan's even farther away, unfortunately for him. So we're gonna we're gonna get there. All right, so looks like we are in the right spot. I'm going to click off the time there. EV charging located on level three and we have arrived so let's go over all of our efficiency numbers here so 806 miles door to door here 281 kilowatt hours we use today with 349 watt hour per mile being our total overall efficiency this last leg was pretty darn good we arrived with 12 percent state of charge 108 degrees in vegas today man it is warm so we are parked here at Resorts World. They have tons and tons of EV chargers. These are their new, apparently, Autel units. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get the plaid juicing up. Only issue is I can't find the adapter anywhere in here. So that's gonna be a situation. Um, but I'll wait for the guys to get here. We'll get that all figured out. Hopefully we can park all the cars here next to each other. 
We got spicy boys running around. Well, as Colton just arrived over to the hotel only a few minutes ago, I'm just getting my first glimpses of Las Vegas pulling into the city now. We are at 8% state of charge, just 19 miles to get over to Resorts World where we'll be ending this. And uh, uh, speed limit's not uh, 60, it said it was 30, didn't it? I don't know. Anyway, Ryan's pretty far back. We're cruising along, beautiful weather here. 107 degrees, cooling off nicely as the sun is uh, going down. Time for a beer, that's for sure. I'm about 45 minutes outside of Vegas, so coming real close to the end of it. And it shouldn't be too big of a surprise, but after that 39 minute wait in Beaver, I'm in the rear, I'm bringing up the back of the pack. But I've got something up my sleeve. Now, both Kyle and Colton know that I was held up in Beaver, but they don't know how long I was there. So, what I'm thinking is, if I'm within 39 minutes of Kyle's arrival in the Lucid, then I can claim that I beat him because that was just me literally waiting at a charger. Um, and he has no idea that this race is still on. Uh, he thinks he's well ahead of me. So I think I've got it. I think I can quote unquote technically beat him. We are in the Lucid and we are so close, only nine miles away, hitting some traffic, unfortunately. 7% state of charge, perfectly timed. I believe Colton found some Autel level two chargers for us to charge on, so sounds great to me. Let's pull in there, pull in dead. We'll juice this sucker up overnight, get ready for uh, round two tomorrow. And eight o'clock on the nose, pulling in behind this super cool looking Model S Plaid right here, nice wheels. Let's grab our little ticket and go see Colton, but we'll mark our time at eight o'clock. We're here in the garage. And here he is, Mr. Connor, number two in the Lucid. They got some Autel chargers here. Don't they? Some nice chargers. We love Autel chargers. So we can't find the Tesla to J adapter? Nope, I talked to Zach. He said he'll bring one by later. Oh, great, good. Okay, well, let me get this plugged in at least. Heck yeah. So, full trip details. We've arrived at 4% state of charge. The last leg, very inefficient, 3.3. I think that's so funny. The whole trip, 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, 220 kilowatt hours used, 802 miles slower than the Model S because of the charging infrastructure. What we really want to do tomorrow is sort of eliminate the charging infrastructure as a barrier and, uh, you know, rip on both sides. Uh, basically see what that car can do versus the Lucid. But like we were saying, Colton, when you buy a car, you buy the infrastructure. Yeah, 100%. And so even though the that may not have the highest peak power or as much range as this car, that's that's what you want to be driving. Yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> All right, well, let's get plugged in here. And uh, man, we just kind of beat the crap out of this thing and the Model S. They did really well. Yeah, they did. And that plaid looks pretty sick over there, that red one. I know, the wheels on that are nice. But they, they parked in a charging spot and didn't plug in. Every single car is like that, like this Model This y. is a Las Vegas thing. What Everyone pulls up and doesn't charge. I don't know. Okay, I am pulling in trying to find hotel parking. EV charging to the right. And here we are. Look at that. It is 8.36. Should I hit Kyle? I should probably hit him. And look who has arrived. Here he is. <laughs> As I'm about to get run over. Go over there. <laughs> wow, nice dry steering too. Not even moving with turning the wheel. <laughs> um, the only reason we're sending him over there is we're only getting five kilowatts on this wall. And uh, they're rated at 19.2, the, the chargers. So we'll see if we can get this one going. Since 5.32 a.m., 732 miles, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, average speed of 60 miles per hour. And that was uh, just this last leg. But yeah. Just to reiterate the results, and you can actually see kind of how close this is. Uh, Colton pulled in at 7.26 p.m. I pulled in at 
8 o'clock p.m. So even if you factor the extra time Colton took to charge in Green River and all that stuff, the Model S won regardless. So, you know, time penalties there or not, honestly, it's in my mind, whoever got their first one, but Colton won even with all the penalties, Model S just killed it. And again, wasn't the most efficient version of the car. So that's the road tripper. I pulled in at eight o'clock on the nose. Again, Colton was 726, I was eight o'clock on the nose. And I only charged for uh, 12 minutes or something like that. Ryan uh, actually stopped and got stuck, of course, for 39 minutes, he claims. He pulled in at 836. However, he charged for 15 minutes in Green River. So he had an extra three minute of time penalty. And also if we reduce, you know, remove the amount of time he was stuck charging in Beaver, it was dead even. We would have pulled in at pretty much the exact same time. But either way, the, re the results were Tesla first, Lucid second, Tycon third. I can't wait for you guys to see the next video. Again, working on it right now. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye. Well, as you guys can see, we have arrived in Las Vegas. It is now actually the next morning and uh, we are actually preparing for the next video. So stay tuned because all the cars are back to 100% state of charge and we are ripping back to Windsor, Colorado, back to clear detailing. But uh, let's sort of quantify what we learned yesterday because it was really a hectic day of driving for me and Ryan and a very easy day of driving for Colton. So Ryan, do you want to share your impressions of driving the Taycan, the infrastructure that we experienced, yeah, yeah, everything like that? I love the Taycan. It's a fantastic car. The charging when it works is incredible. It is so fast and it rips through most of the pack. You're there for 12, 15 minutes at a time, sometimes even less than that. That's amazing. I found it super comfortable. It's pretty quiet. I wouldn't say it's quite as comfortable as, say, uh, a Lucid, but it feels really solid. Uh, the handling is great, and I had uh, a really great time driving in the rain. It seemed like you guys were having some problems, and I was able to just push right through it. Unfortunately, I can't say the exact same thing about the infrastructure. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but we didn't have a great experience. Uh, the one charge that actually went really well for me was in uh, Glenwood Springs. Unfortunately, there was a ton of construction in that parking lot and I had to drive around and that took like an extra five or six minutes. So even even the good news comes uh, a little bit tempered. Uh, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make this a tenable option for literally anyone, because if this isn't your job, I don't know how you'd be able to do this. Yeah, we drove 812 miles yesterday yeah. and we had not one perfect charging session. Not one that went as expected. Yep. Whereas Colton drove the exact same distance in the Model S and every charge stop was near perfection. It was, it was. Um, yeah, Model S is just like, I don't know, feels like the road trip king right now, I would say. It is just so freaking nice on the road. One thing I learned yesterday that I need to dial in, I was talking to Kyle last night, we get this very big waft on the suspension. So putting it in sport, um, basically suspension all the way slammed, I hope should take some of that off. Um, yeah, charging yesterday was insane. The car was ready to go way before I was, and I was still hustling. So. I think most of my stops were what, like 11 minutes, Kyle? Yeah, nine minutes. You had one at nine minutes, one at 12 minutes, uh, just really fast, one at seven minutes. Yeah. And you know, the Model S doesn't have the big range of the Lucid, especially with these wheels. And it also doesn't have the big peak charging power of the Taycan or the Lucid. Right. But you smoked us on the first round yeah. uh, because we got stuck in Green River. And then you smoked us on the second round because I was stuck signet surging and you were stuck at 100 kilowatts and then got stuck in a charger with three lucids at it right. yeah. and so you know i think lucid put those cars there to make that one win they uh definitely explicitly told me that i'm not even kidding <laughs> they uh, said, oh you're in a race with a lucid i don't know if we want to move oh really yeah. that's amazing oh yeah so it was, it was 39 minutes which yeah. is notably less time than you beat me by Right, so the Taycan would have won if you yes. didn't get held up. Yeah. And we knew that going into it because I was stuck at 30 kilowatt charging, signet surging in, where were we, yeah. Salina. Yeah, when you snaked my handle. Right, when I, <laughs> that's right. I snagged the 350 kilowatts sneakily. And uh, then uh, it backfired, so we're yeah, not okay. Yeah, really backfired, but I would have had the same charging on the 150, but you would have been even farther ahead that's at right. that point. So, you know, even though the, the Taycan and the Lucid are both high voltage vehicles, the Lucid being such high voltage, 
really does not play nice with the infrastructure that Lucid has partnered with. Yes, I, I mean, we've seen some surging on the Tycon, but it's not nearly as bad. It doesn't last nearly as long. So. Right, even last night we went to go DC charge the cars because our hotel has level two charging where we completed the charge to 100, but we went to this DC charger, you know, just down the road somewhere here, and it took the Lucid over 90 minutes to reach 87% state of charge, where the Tycon was like done and the Model S was done on the EA station. It's just unbelievable how poorly this car works with its own charging infrastructure. Yes, I, I would definitely agree. Your charging curve, I think, will be the biggest weakness, especially now with some of the longer legs that we're planning. Right, so everyone should stay tuned for the next video because now we know what stations to avoid. Right. And now we know what infrastructure we can use. Colton has dialed in the Model S really learned the trip planner. The Lucid got a huge software update last night, which I'm really looking forward to trying out today on the return. So stay tuned for the next video. I'll leave you just with my final thoughts here quickly. But uh, those three cars, we have the legit race to Vegas. It's a return, the reverse race to Vegas. <laughs> Uh, race to Windsor, Colorado <laughs> doesn't sound as exciting. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. I think the Lucid's going to win. I think you've got a very good shot, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to... charging goes fine, I think, yeah. But you also are going to be doing the, the Tycon quick stop thing. So it all just comes down yeah. to, will the stations be available? I do have to do a long stop in Salina. So there's that. Long stop in Salina. Yeah, well, we'll get into that in the next video. But let me share my thoughts on how yesterday went, and then uh, we'll end this one. So obviously, yesterday was a little bit of a failed day, if you will. Actually, it kind of not necessarily proved a point, but we learned a lot, which is even though you might not have the fastest charging, longest range electric vehicle, according to Lucid, you can still go way farther, way faster in a Tesla because you buy a car, you buy the infrastructure. And unfortunately, the CCS infrastructure is such crap that we cannot recommend at all buying a CCS vehicle if you plan to leave your bubble of home. I mean, even one time, if you know one of my friends bought a CCS car and they did the trip we did yesterday, getting stuck, Ryan was stuck for over two and a half hours combined, waiting to get plugged into a charger just to find out he couldn't get max speeds. That's unacceptable, totally crazy, and um, just, just don't know how anyone could do that. So the cars might be amazing, the tech might be next level, but you just, you know, you got to buy the infrastructure. It's so important that everything is vertically integrated. So that's what I learned yesterday is the Lucid has amazing range. It's far more efficient than these cars. Um, they actually, we found out that the Taycan's more efficient than the Model S, at least on these wheels. And even though we used the least efficient Model S, you know, the plaid with the Martian wheels and everything on there, um, it still smoked both of us. So it kind of proves the point. It didn't matter if we have a Model S long range or not, because that would be even faster than this car. So anyway, we uh, we learned a lot. You know, Colton left with a lot more energy out of Green River than we did, but we calculated it out where he would still win, not by the over 30 minutes that he beat me here by, but it would be maybe closer to 15 minutes, somewhere around there. And um, now for the return, we're all taking the same cars because we've all learned them really well. And we are ready to optimize and ready to stretch these cars as best as we can with the infrastructure in the ground. I really want to see a win for this Lucid, but I know I'm going to have to work a lot harder than Colton will in the Model S. Thanks for watching another out of spec motoring road trip. Hope you found this somewhat enjoyable and informative. If anything, I have learned that the CCS network is getting worse by the day and can't recommend it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.